from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. The Energy One Stop Shop, or EOSS, which was officially launched by Trade, Industry and Competition Minister Ibrahim Patel in July, is in the ramp-up phase of a four-stage process aimed at fast-tracking the regulatory approvals required for new electricity projects to be connected to the grid. Cameron Mackay tells us more. Launched by the Invest SA organization, which is part of the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition, or the DTIC, the EOSS initiative is already overseeing hundreds of applications. The EOSS is also capacitating itself with the help of several departments and partners to meet its objectives. Chief Director Lester Bauer tells Engineering News that the first stage has been completed and involved establishing the EOSS facility with dedicated personnel, a website, a registration portal for energy projects, and a mapped process showing where projects are in the approval process. In Phase 2, the EOSS will be scoping provincial and municipal processes and building capacity at these two spheres. In Phase 3, a single electronic application process will be implemented with automated feedback. In Phase 4, the full project will be in place, covering both immediate blockages and looking at a wider reform program. We've developed a, a, a website with a portal where developers can go and register their projects. We've developed a tracking mechanism and a tool where we can then track all projects that uh, is coming to the one-stop shop. But we've also taken over a list of projects that the presidency used to drive before in a, uh, a presidential committee. And, and this was now given to us to now fast track and there were about 114 projects mm. in on that list that we are, we are tracking. The EOSS has also engaged with energy developers who have used the portal and encourages more developers to engage with the portal and provide feedback to improve the process. The creation of the EOSS is an acknowledgement by government that the red tape governing energy projects are onerous, particularly as applications need to be submitted up to 14 different government departments. We created another mechanism uh, to see how we deal with these uh, approaches. So instead of us going to a department and just asking there for assistance, we went via the presidency to every department, to the heads of the departments, and we said, we, are, we know we are establishing the one-stop shop, but for us to get quick responses and feedback from you, we need dedicated people who could be our leads to talk to when it comes to an application process. So DG's had assigned uh, dedicated people that sits in a grouping called the Technical Working Group uh, of the One Stop Shop. And we meet on a regular basis, we've met about six times already, on a regular basis to make sure we can iron out uh, how we can directly deal with the department where there's a challenge. Given the difficulty of requesting officials from multiple departments to be constantly available to assist with applications, particularly in a context where workflow is inconsistent, the EOSS has opted for a model of having internal administrators dealing directly with applications. These administrators then communicate with department representatives on the technical working group to secure technical advice. The EOSS does, however, have funding support from the International Finance Corporation, the World Bank, and the Foreign and Commonwealth and Development Office of the UK, who are assisting the EOSS to map the processes at a national and municipal level for Phase 2. The EOSS is also working with the South African Local Government Association to capacitate local municipalities as many do not have the necessary skills and knowledge to evaluate energy projects and the economic value of such projects in a fiscally constrained environment. By the end of the third phase, the EOSS will have implemented an electronic system and will migrate away from the current manual model. The EOSS has a partnership with the Companies and Intellectual Property Commission which has offered its in-house support to engineers that can help build an electronic tracking system. The EOSS also has an engagement in its Memorandum of Understanding with the Energy Council of South Africa and other energy sector associations, who will also contribute to facilitating private sector involvement and funding. The Council and involved associations can advise the EOSS's tracking and monitoring methodologies and what is needed to improve the energy project application process, based on feedback from private sector association members.
Bauer explains that the EOSS is likely a temporary measure currently needed owing to South Africa's challenges with ESCOM and energy supply. However, the EOSS has, together with the World Bank, began developing standard operating procedures that will be made as generic as possible, so it can be adjusted if needed for dealing with similar challenges in other local sectors going forward. The EOSS has also shared these standard operating procedures with departments, as while well, some departments have them, others don't. Because ESCOM is part of the EOSS working group, the EOSS is able to communicate directly with the utility to address issues around connecting projects. They are rolling out new substations or they're rolling out new transformers into some areas which require application processes. They may need a water license, they may need a, a land use license in the area, they may need a environmental study in those areas, especially if it's these big transformers that are rolling out. So they have subsequently then asked the one-stop shop to have a special tab on our tracking tool for ESCOM projects, those projects. So we're now in, 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 in discussion with them and looking at those projects that they're coming, bringing on to, but we are saying we want to look at projects that are not lengthy timeline, because some of them have lengthy time, then five years, they should be rolled. What are the ones that you want imminently now done that can alleviate some of these challenges and that we can talk to the department. So we're going to put that also onto the portal and onto the tracking tool and we can see how we can chase that on their behalf and then report in that particular way to the various structures. Yeah. Bauer stresses the importance of adhering to checks and balances within the process of onboarding local energy projects and correctly navigating through necessary legal and regulatory processes. The EOSS reports to various structures as well as directly to relevant department ministers. This keeps us humble in making sure that we're following the processes. Yet within the structures that have been created in this energy crisis space, we're also cognizant of the fact that we need to move things forward and fast and at speed to, to see how we can deal with the crisis. So in those committees, we do have then right to escalate things there and to make sure that we're following within the legal framework and process. Not not circumventing as you indicated, but trying to shorten the processes within the legal framework. In addition, the Industrial Development Corporation, or the IDC, National Empowerment Fund and the DTIC have set aside resources to assist companies with energy-related challenges. To date, the department and entities have approved projects worth 294 million rand. Bauer adds that the EOSS has received many inquiries from developers for incentives as well as funding around energy related initiatives. There were announcements were made on how we can support smaller uh, developers of, of particular technologies to help them over the cards. So how can we assist an inquiry that says I want to now get into the solar panel development phase of these things. I don't want to, don't want to do big ones, but I also want to play my part. Maybe I can do the outer housing for these things and I've got some here. So that is where the Energy Resilience Fund is coming in from the IDC and the NEF. So when we get projects of that nature, we then refer it to them and we've developed between ourselves a referral matrix. So we'll put it on the so where we understand what the value of this project is. Uh, we're not, we can't look at it because number one, we don't, we're not a funding entity. We are unlocking and unblocking of challenges that mature developers are having to get energy onto the grid. Uh, and we've also agreed that we'll have a threshold for these things because we've received applications for uh, 500 megawatts, uh, you know, so, so small, small 500 kilowatts onto, I mean, it's not even one meg. Uh, so having 10 people trying to chase one meg, which is not going to make a difference onto the, on, on the grid itself, we're talking about 1000 megawatts can make a difference, you know. So so those are the kind of things we are we're looking at. So we've got a threshold of 10 megawatt projects we'll start looking at. Uh, not anything under that because we don't have the capacity. But we certainly see how we can refer these projects then to IDC, to NEF, and utilizing the Resilience Fund to see how they can support some of these projects. Bauer explains that Invest SA has various divisions that focuses on five key sectors of the local economy and also supports the development of special economic zones. This is done to facilitate domestic as well as foreign direct investment within South Africa and to assist investors who are looking to navigate the local regulatory space to implement local projects and stimulate the economy. The other elements are 
that fits into the one-stop shop anyway. So that's with talking to Home Affairs, talking to SARS, to CIPC, to unlock some of the challenges with municipalities. And that's why the, the one-stop shops in the provinces are very critical because they interact with investors. Because as you remember, investments don't happen at investors, say in Pretoria at this campus. They happen on localities, in municipalities, in provinces. So we are the conduit and we are the, uh, the partner in making sure that we help them to embed these things in those particular areas. So hence, going forward, the one-stop shop will certainly, uh, energy one-stop shop will, will in the short term not be rolling out energy one-stop offices in the OSSs there, but we will utilize the OSSs in the other provinces to also receive applications, to then discern whether this application is sitting at a provincial and municipal level based on the size of the megawatts, or whether it needs to be escalated to the one-stop shop at the national level to see how we can deal with the net and that's how we, we're working and looking at seeing how we create a better conducive environment and an easy environment for business to do things feeding into the regulatory environment uh, and dealing with those issues yeah. that's crema media's real economy report join us again next week for more news and insights into south africa's real economy and don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter